In this video, I'm going to give a little introduction to game theory, and in particular, we're going to be looking at something called a simultaneous one-shot game. Here's the story. Two people, there could be more than two, we're going to stick with two, each have two choices. They could have more than two choices, but we're going to begin with two choices each. And the outcome of these two choices is going to determine a payoff for each person. And what we're trying to do here in game theory is try to look at the two choices of each of the two people and try to predict what's going to happen. What is the first person going to choose? What is the second person going to choose? And what's the outcome? And so there are a lot of different ways that we can use to try to predict what the outcome will be. And we're going to focus on two common ways of predicting what might be the outcome. The first way of predicting here is called a Nash Equilibrium. And the second way of predicting is to look for dominant strategies. So let's look down at this table here. This is an example of a famous game called A Prisoner's Dilemma. We have two players, Bonnie and Clyde. This is a one-shot simultaneous game. Simultaneous means these two players have to make their choice at the same time. In other words, without knowing what the other person has done, even if it's not at exactly the same moment, Bonnie has to make her choice without knowing what Clyde did. Clyde has to make his choice ignorant of what Bonnie did. So simultaneously they make a choice. We also assume that this is a one-shot game. What that means is Bonnie and Clyde don't know each other. They've never met each other, unlike the real Bonnie and Clyde. And they will never see each other again after this game is played. The reason we assume that is to simplify things to get rid of the possibility that Bonnie uh, might be embarrassed by her choice, Bonnie might feel guilty, or she might be worried that Clyde will come get her later on. So one shot game, all Bonnie's concerned is what Bonnie gets, all Clyde is concerned about is what Clyde gets. So they don't really care about each other to simplify things. So let's look at this table and, and see what uh, is going on. So Clyde here, everything about Clyde is in blue and Clyde is up top and his choices are here in blue to rat on the left and clam up on the right. So if Clyde rats that puts us in the left hand column. If Clyde clams up, which is a, a slang English way of saying Clyde stays quiet and does not uh, testify against Bonnie, another criminal, then that puts us on the right hand side. And Bonnie has the same two choices. Bonnie can rat, which means testify against Clyde, or she can stay quiet, clam up. And if Bonnie rats, her decision to rat puts us in the top row, where we're looking at the payoffs, and Bonnie staying quiet puts us in the bottom row. So for example, if Bonnie rats, top row, but Clyde clams up, right column, that would put us here at 0 minus 10. And Bonnie's numbers are black, so this represents in this prisoner's dilemma that Bonnie will get out of jail free right now, no jail time, but Clyde will lose 10 years of his life sitting in jail, minus 10. So now that we understand what's going on with the table, there are four possible outcomes. The goal of game theory is to see if Sometimes we can't, but if we can try to make a prediction about what might happen in this game, what would a reasonable outcome be? The two most common ways of looking at reasonable outcomes, number one is the Nash Equilibrium. This is named after John Nash, who won the Nobel Prize, shared the Nobel Prize in game theory back in the early 90s. And Nash's idea of an equilibrium is that if one of these four outcomes happened, then he would say it's an equilibrium, which means it's a balancing place, a resting place, a place of no change, no reason for movement. It's an equilibrium if neither player would want to change their mind given the other person's choice. So let's look at these four, you have to look at all four possibilities and see if there's a Nash Equilibrium for any of them. 
Now here's the way I do this. I always start at the bottom right hand. So let me underline in red this outcome. And so this outcome is the outcome where Bonnie stays quiet, she gets a year in jail, and Clyde also, the right hand side, stayed quiet and he's getting a year in jail. Nash's equilibrium concept says we need to ask both players do you want to change your mind now that you know what the other player did? Will you give them one last chance? We have to ask both players. So let's ask Bonnie here, for example. Let's ask her first. Bonnie, would you like to change your mind? Given that Clyde stayed quiet and we're in the right-hand column, and Bonnie, you also stayed quiet, we're in the bottom row, Bonnie, do you want to change your mind? If Bonnie changes her mind, given the fact that we know that Clyde stayed quiet, instead of going to jail for a year, what's going to happen to Bonnie is she would move up, right? Bonnie's decision, she's not going to clam up, she's going to rat, would put her at zero years in jail instead of one year in jail. Would Bonnie want to change her mind and get out of jail now instead of a year from now? Yes, she would want to change her mind. And so this bottom right hand combination of choices, clam up, clam up, is not a Nash equilibrium. And so let's cross that out. We know it's not a Nash equilibrium as soon as one player wants to change their mind. Because a Nash equilibrium is a place where neither player wants to change their mind. It's a place of rest. Now let's check this uh, other possibility here. Okay, I'm going to underline. This is where Bonnie rats and Clyde stays quiet. Right side, Clyde clams up. Well, let's ask Bonnie. Bonnie, do you want to change your mind? Well, if she did, she would go back to the minus one where she was before. And she, we know she doesn't want to change her mind. So the way I'm going to mark that, usually I'll just put a little check mark, but uh, in this drawing program, let me put a little green circle here. And um, that will tell us that Bonnie said she does not want to uh, change her mind. So green circle with a red outline. Okay. Now let's ask Clyde. Hey Clyde, you stayed quiet, right side, and Bonnie just ratted on you. Clyde, you're going to jail for 10 years. Now would Clyde want to change his mind? Well, if Clyde changed his mind, keep in mind Clyde chooses either right or left, clam up or rat, right or left. If Clyde changes his mind, he would move from the right side to the left when he changes his decision. So what Clyde is changing his mind, or what he's uh, considering here, is would I rather stay in jail for six years or ten years? Well, Clyde would want to change his mind. He doesn't want to go to jail for ten years if he can change his mind and go for six years. And so this is not a Nash equilibrium. Even though Bonnie is okay there, Clyde's not. So I'm going to cross it out. That's not a Nash equilibrium. So now we can check this possibility here and see is it a Nash equilibrium. Clyde? Well, Clyde just told us that he did not want to clam up when Bonnie rats. He didn't want to go to jail for 10 years over here. He would rather go to jail for six years. So Clyde would not want to change his mind and go back over here. And so I'm going to put a little green circle on Clyde's minus six here. That'll tell us he's okay. He doesn't want to change his mind. But Bonnie, hey Bonnie, here's what's happening. Bonnie ratted Clyde, left side also ratted. We know Clyde's okay, but Bonnie, would you like to change your mind? And Bonnie says, well, I'm going to jail for six years. I choose up or down, top row or bottom row. If I don't change my mind, I'm going to jail for six years. If I do change my mind, I'm going to jail for 10 years. Does Bonnie want to change her mind? No, she doesn't because by staying here, that's her best choice given what Clyde did. 
And so what we're seeing here is a Nash equilibrium where Bonnie rats and Clyde rats. And neither player wants to change their mind given the other's choice. Now if you check this bottom left one where Bonnie clams up and Clyde rats, that's not a Nash equilibrium either because uh, the same kind of reason we saw earlier, uh, Bonnie would want to change her mind and go up there. So this is how you find a Nash equilibrium for a game. Now in the next part I'm going to talk about dominant strategies and we'll talk about how dominant strategies and Nash equilibria relate to each other.